We're located at 313 Jones Avenue. We happen to be in the center of the universe, Greer, South Carolina. We call that the center of God's universe. If you've never been to Greer, we'd love to have you come be part of it. Listen, thanks for coming in to with us today, wherever you might be. I'm Carol Gould watching. You know, Carol, we love you from uh, WGGS Television. Uh, we miss you so much. We pray for you. She's a member of that Baptist Church. Ready to book you and go. We're glad to have all of you today. We're going to sing. David, you're going to lead us. We're going to sing. We're going to do something today. Well, we'll tell you all about what's going on this afternoon and evening. But let's stand and get ready to praise the Lord. David. Well, good morning, everyone. As Pastor said, we are so glad that you're here with us to worship this morning. And I hope you're glad to be in God's house today. And that's what we're going to sing first. He has made me glad. Bless 
us a part in there. We did some stuff. So like, we, 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 we didn't know. I didn't know what it was. Well, I didn't know. I, but hey, I'm glad you're here today. Kate, come over here and help yourself. Go ahead, baby. Yeah, Kate, yeah. Come on, sweetie. Come on. <laughs> Don't sit down yet. Kate's going to help me. Come on here, baby. If this afternoon, how are you? Come on, you look so pretty. How come you're so pretty? Step up on the table. How come you're so pretty? Huh? This is Kate. We're over here because this afternoon, beginning at 5 o'clock, isn't that right? You can come and have your picture made with your kids. And, and this is a lovely background. Isn't that right? Who's taking the picture? You are, okay, George's taking the picture. Are they free? And you'll print them right here? No, we won't print them. We'll put them on the website. And they can get them off the website. Okay, will you come and have your picture made with me today? Do you have your camera? Yes. Come take it right now. Matter of fact, why don't we do this? While Joy is taking our picture, you can speak, you can bump, you can high five, speak to everyone. We're glad you're here today. Welcome to El Not only is this baby a long baby, that was what we said last night, but do you know the first name of this precious child? We say in Waco, where we went to school, Sikkim Bear, Baylor. This is not Baylor University, but it is Baylor Long, and I, 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 you know, I do this to everybody, put them to sleep, God bless you more, I do you more. But anyways, Art, isn't this precious? Let's give him a hand. I just wanted everybody to see that. Picture. 
Just come and eat. That's all we say. And I don't know what else to say. But uh, that we'll have a lot of fun with that. We really will. You got an announcement today? Come on. And take, get the mic from. There you go. Come on, Miss Deborah, and uh, listen to this. Well, it's green, but is it open? Yep. Okay. Um, Ms. Pat asked me to make an announcement. She is a prayer team leader. Um, she wants to uh, start the intercessory prayer again in, in the prayer room <coughs> during services. So this is a sign sheet to start next week, and it'll take us through February, as many lines as we had on the sheet, and then we'll add more later. So just remember that people of all ages, please come back. Um, take a Sunday, pray, even if two want to come back there together. That would be great. We know that prayer is vital to um, the work of El Bethel. Uh, unless we pray, uh, the Lord is not going to do anything. We can do any, you know, have as much activity as we want to, but he's got to be behind it. And so we need to ask for his power. And, um, and we've already been praying for the fall festival. I appreciate I've heard a lot of prayers for you. And let's just pray that Lord will bring people to him through that. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, did I? We want to say this. Vacation Bible School is coming next June. And we're asking now for you to begin preparation in your own heart about your involvement and your help with that. So we'll be saying more about that. We'll have an initial meeting probably somewhere in November. Also, we'll get that date to you. The church leadership team will be meeting sometime in November so that we can begin looking ahead from January through July of next year. Isn't that hard to believe we're doing that so quickly? I mean, think about that. We're getting the boxes now. Come on, we, we still, you have until the 14th, okay, to get these shoe boxes in, all right? They're going Samaritan first. So uh, we, we hope that you'll take, if you've not done that, let's get them in and then we'll be set ready to go. Also, now remember this. Now tonight we'll have a lot of things going on. We'll need all of your help, as I said. We're going to put our bouncy houses back in the backyard. No, we're going to, okay. Oh, I know, listen. Listen. Jordan, you're learning. You're learning. Happy life, happy wife. Absolutely. <laughs> and if mama, she says there, that's Yes, ma'am, whatever you say. You know, and, uh, and, and Sam and Ryan, by the way, we're glad to have you all. Vision, this is this, so honored to have you both. Let me tell you that. And Nancy may be back with us today. We welcome you and all the others. But uh, what we're going to do, our, our bouncy houses will be out in the front, and uh, we will enjoy that. But also, you need to hear this. I'm very serious. When we have 125 in our morning worship, Listen carefully. When we have 125, including the choir, in worship, the next Sunday, we're going to blow, we bought a bouncy house, you know that. So we're going to blow the bouncy house up right here on Sunday morning, and during morning worship service, myself, James Allen, our treasurer, and 
Mark Long, our chairman of deacons, we're going to jump on it during the, the brief meeting time, okay? Yeah. While you're greeting and shaking hands, the three of us will jump in the jump yes. okay? I, I, yeah. But you've got to have 120 knots. I mean, now that's fair enough, isn't it? I mean, do we have a <laughs> <laughs> we hope. We, we hope. But that, we're going to have fun with that, all right? So that's 125 in worship. And we, we can do that. Come on, all we need is everybody. What would happen if everybody came to church on Sunday? Seriously, if everybody came to church, uh, we have on, on a given four or five week time at least 125, 130 different folks here. What if we all came in one church? That'd be a great thing to do. And uh, so anyways, that, that's forthcoming. I think that you can see all the announcements that are listed there. We've got a tailgate party next uh, 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 Sunday afternoon at 5 o'clock. And uh, bring your favorite tailgating food. Um, what, what, what would you bring? Chicken? Huh? In Waco, we eat bad. <laughs> By the way, I needed to say, what about those bags? We beat Texas yesterday. And, we just, and Clemson beat somebody. What, did Carolina play? We didn't lose. That's a good mark. But, uh, you know, and I know all of you were just sitting on the edge of your seat as Baylor was playing Texas yesterday. Anyway, uh, you can see the announcements that are listed here. We hope that you'll be there for us next uh, By the way, next Sunday morning, you don't want to miss this, okay, Barry? You know, uh, if you watch uh, if you watch uh, Christian television, you know from time to time I interview. Uh, this past Monday night, I once again in, I interviewed Linda Gunter from the Love Him Love Him uh, Haitian Choir. Next Sunday morning, uh, we have Miss Linda Gunter and her husband David, who started this ministry back in 2010 after that horrific earthquake. We'll have six of the kids with us now. Most of them, now Miranda, I think she's nine or ten. Uh, but uh, the kids that you'll see next Sunday, there'll be six of them, okay? Now, understand this. Please hear me out. The children that come next Sunday, they were pulled from the debris of that 2010 earthquake. The children you see next week, they don't have, a, their mamas died, their daddies died. Their brother died, their sister died, their aunt died, their cousin died, their uncle died. They have nobody. Nobody. And so what the Linda Gunter of them have done is brought them. We had a choir with us in 2016. But they're going to be with us next Sunday. And you will enjoy, you'll enjoy the program. I, it will be a time to challenge you. And uh, I hope you bring some friends because... Were you at Easter with us when the choir came? Do you remember that? Okay, I know your mom and dad were, but uh, we had them back in 2016 before I retired. But I, I want to encourage you to be here, and I want to encourage you to bring your kids and your grandkids, because these are children. Uh, they're growing up, but you understand they lost everything in the earthquake of 2010. Everything. They were pulled from the rubble. Yeah. Don't miss that, okay? You, you'll be, I promise, you'll be blessed. We will take a love offering up for them, okay, for uh, for the ministry there. And you'll hear more about it. And, uh, uh, but anyways, I hope and pray that uh, you'll do your best to be here, okay? Don't forget on Tuesday night, you got to go the 2nd of November to see Tia about about painting, I think that's on Tuesday night. Is that right? Yeah. Dirty told me you're going to come. That's great, but I just need to know which option you want so I can. I brought my list today, okay. and you can either pay me in advance. That's fine, or you can bring cash the night of. Bring cash the night out. I'll pay her today. But you'll have a lot of fun on that Tuesday night, and it's a paint party, um, and it's not building. You're not paying the bill. Okay. All right. So make sure you do that. We're not paying. <laughs> we're not painting the walls, all right? All right. Well, anyway, we're so appreciative of your presence today, and thanks again for being here. Don't forget tonight, very, very important, and uh, we, we trust that you, you'll be part of that. Amen.
Right now, we want to go to the Lord in prayer. He's been so good to us. Has he not? So good. And so, if you would, join with me if you go to the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, Benny, little John, let's go into the house of the Lord. I'm so grateful, loving Father, that when I was 13, God Parent and our associate pastor came to my house and led me to know you as personal Lord and Savior. We're here today because we love you. It's not about a building, not about brick and mortar, but it is all about Jesus. And we love you and we adore you. And so tonight, this afternoon, at 5 o'clock, Lord Jesus, you know what our desire is. Now, you know our motives. Why are we doing this? We're not trying to put our church on the map. We're just trying to reach families, children, boys and girls. And our desire is to see them to come to know you personally as the Lord and Savior. Lord, we're in your house and we reverence you. Yes, this is your house, but we are your temple. But we reverence you as we come to worship this day. Oh, we come from a lot of different walks of life. We're young, we're old, we're retired, we're just beginning. Some of us are in our sunset years, others are in their sunrise years. For many of us, dusk is approaching. For a few, dawn will soon be. We're reminded of that when we see these little babies when we see this little baby named Vega. The world is in front of you. I pray you bless it. You know, Lord, we talk a lot about prayer. But that oftentimes I know concerns you. We talk about it, but do we do? We've got an opportunity here at the church to during morning worship, we can have at least one individual in the prayer room pray, following along with the book, pray as we worship. I'm asking you, Lord, that whatever we do, we never lose sight of the reason that the Lord Jesus Christ is the reason for all sins. And I pray now you'll bless us as we continue our worship. Thank you for David. For read. Thank you for all that make it possible. May we honor your name. And may we never forget that down at the foot of the cross is the most high place we can be. We love you. We love you so much. We make our prayer in your marvelous name. Amen. And amen. Pastor, if I could uh, make a quick announcement with you. My God, would come up. Deacons, could I get you guys to come up here for real quick? And uh, I just echo what the pastor says. If you uh, you need to be here next week, you need to be present. If you're watching, you need to be present next week to hear this compelling story from the, from the Haitian uh, children. I'm looking forward to it. We need to have a lot of children here. So if you got children, bring children, friends, and bring everybody here. Magali and uh, Pastor, did with us a little over a year. Is it, it, does it seem that long? Oh, I'm sorry. It seems like five years. No, it don't, it don't seem that long at all, Pastor. Y'all have really come in and loved us and You're inspired great. us. And uh, today we just have a little token of appreciation for you. Thank it's you. in the Baylor colors there. You'll notice it's that. It's green and gold. <laughs> sick of bear. I love it. Yes, yes. So thank you, Pastor and Magali, for coming in, inspiring us, and loving us. We have some of his favorite dark chocolate mallow cups oh and some cowtails in there. Oh my. And we have a, a card from our church and eleven hundred dollars. It's just a token of our appreciation for both of you and what you mean to us. We love you. Not only do we thank you, but we thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deacons. And on behalf of the church, we thank you so much. You're very kind. I, I, I didn't know what to do. Okay, thank you.
You can't have any candy. Don't put it in your day. You know, I have to put it in your day. <laughs> and one last quick announcement. Um, I've talked about this multiple times, especially when we come close. Um, I've been with the South Carolina Singing Churchman, I think about, this is my fifth year. And last year we were blessed to come to this community and we were at Washington Baptist. We're coming to Greer again. So Thursday night, please plan on being there. We'll be at First Baptist Greer, which is right downtown. Um, music starts at 5.45, so you probably won't be there about 5.30, make sure you get a seat. If you haven't seen the church, and it is truly a wonderful worship concert and you'll have a great time. I hope to see you there.
give us a little travel music there, Reed, while they probably get down. Some of them take a little bit longer. Don't forget that. Thank you. Don't anybody trip going down the stairs. Now, you want to redo your announcement? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Donnie just told me I was incorrect. I wasn't looking at the slide. Um, music starts at 6.45, not 5.45. Um, and then the worship concert will begin at 7. The music is 6.45. Well, thank you. Y'all pulled a fast one on me. I wasn't expecting a, 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 a gift from Thank you, thank you. You're so kind. So undeserved, thank you. What what did you put in the water this time? Who was? No, last time is I died in. I was yellow for about three weeks. I am glad you're here and uh, we uh, we're gonna have a great day today. Remember, uh, many of you have name badges, you have a lanyard you wanna wear. They'll identify you. And remember, we have folks come in if they need to know where restrooms are or uh, uh, change tables. Don't we have, in some of the bathrooms down here, do we have change tables? Okay. Just want to make sure because we have a lot of families and kids, a lot of our members who um, hopefully will come back. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm told, this is what kind of gets me. I, I, I don't mean this. Okay, I said it to you the other week. Maybe I said it, on, maybe I said it Monday night. I, I know they talk about COVID, and, I, and I'm very aware that we're concerned about that. And I know a lot of people say, well, we just can't get back. You know, somebody, a pastor's wife was telling me that uh, one of their members was telling her why she couldn't come back to church as they were getting their hair done at the beauty department. Anyways, uh, you go figure that one out, okay? And I just say I'm glad that you were here this morning. An old story with a new twist. Now, if I tell you we're going to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, now you know who we're talking about, don't you? Hope you do. Huh? Yeah. All right. He was a big rascal. And uh, we're looking there at 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verses 4 through 7. We're going to, we'll reference all of, the, all of that chapter. But if you are able... Let's stand as we honor the reading of God's holy word. From 1 Samuel chapter 17. And you'll like this. We begin there at verse 4. And a champion. Now hold on. Let me explain that to you just for a second. Many times when there were wars going on, particularly between the Philistines and, and Israel, instead of the entire force of Israel and the entire force of the Philistines coming together, a lot of times what they would do, would, they would pick out one person who was outstanding in their army and they would send that individual to face the other individual. Well, the Philistines said, instead of all of us trying to go down there and fight, we're going to send out one person. We call him our champion. Okay? So this particular battle Please understand, it was between David and Goliath, but understand this, that because of the way the scripture reads, there was Goliath, they called him their champion, and there was little David. That's how, and the, their, David's army was back there, and the Philistine army was back there. Okay, that's how they did battle from time to time, and this is one of those battles. I want to make sure you understand that. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Now, let's see what you remember about that. Well, how tall would Goliath be if we were using our system? Thank you, nine feet and what? Nine. About nine inches, that's like one. A span is what? From the tip of your middle finger to your elbow. All right, that's about 18 inches. So the Bible says six span. So six span times 18 is about nine feet. And you add the half span, so you're looking about nine foot six. Now, whoo, that's a big man. 
I'm glad, I'm glad the NBA wasn't around then. All right, we continue. All right. He had a bronze helmet on his head and was armed with a coat of mail. That is, it's simply a, it looked like a coat uh, of a heavyweight surrounded. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. All right. Probably what you want to do, that would be a shekel was point. The ounces, all right? There about a shekel was point eleven ounces. Gives you an idea how much weight. So, uh, and he goes on to say, and he had a bronze armor on his leg and bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed six hundred shekels. And a shield bearer went before him. May God bless to us the reading of his holy, inspired, ever free word. Now let's pray. Father, may we learn in these closing moments of our service about Goliath and how we can slay the Goliaths that face us every day. That's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. May you be seated. All of us have bad days, don't we? <clears throat> Have you ever had a bad day? I don't mean a bad hair day. <laughs> but uh, uh, some of you wish you could have a bad hair day. But I'm talking about, have you ever had a, just a bad day? You know it's going to be a bad day when? <laughs> Your boys ride their motorcycle. But that, oh, did I say the wrong thing, David? I didn't mean to. How would you complete that sentence? You know it's going to be a bad And you were sick last week. Did this... Did this mysterious girl, Sydney, take care of you? Yeah, What were y'all doing? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Don't you know that kissing does that kind of stuff? I mean, it passes. <laughs> okay, and we're glad you're back, all right? You know it's going to be a bad day. Listen, you know it's going to be a bad day when you step out of your bed barefooted and you step into water. You, uh, you know it's going to be a bad day when you realize you put both contacts into the same eye. You know it's going to be a bad day when you lock your keys in the car with the motor running. I don't think you can do that with a key fob, but maybe you can. You know it's going to be a bad day when you turn your computer on and it says all files lost. You know it's going to be a bad day when your twin sister forgets your birthday. You uh, you know it's going to be a really bad day when you're asked to give the keynote address to the board of directors and you stand up that morning at 8 o'clock before the board of directors and realize you're wearing one brown shoe and one black shoe. You know it's going to be a bad day when you wake up in the hospital and you find yourself all bandaged up and your insurance agent tells you that your accident policy covers your falling off the roof but not hitting the ground. You know it's going to be a bad day when you're driving your car behind a group of Hell's Angel motorcyclists and your homer gets stuck. You know it's going to be a bad day when your 13-year-old comes in and sits down at the breakfast table and announces, Today's the big day for the science fair. Any ideas for my project? If you've ever had kids or teenagers, you know that happens. One spring there in West Texas, a tornado was coming like it always does in various times of the year. His name was Paul. He was three or four years old at that time. And they, had, they didn't have a, an underground shelter, and so what they would always do when, her, when the tornadoes would come here in West Texas, Paul's dad would always make mom and him get un, lay down, maybe under the bed. He might put an extra mattress on top, just to be sure. You could hear the wind. You've ever been to a tornado? Uh, and you know, when we lived in Texas, my gracious, it's just something. And particularly when we lived in Alabama, you hear these things like the freight train. It's just unbelievable. Wood chopping, and you hear the wind. It's just unbelievable. Well, little Paul was under the mattress, and he was waiting on his daddy, but his daddy never came under, so he peered out from underneath the mattress, and there was his dad looking out the window, watching the tornado. 
And yes, you do that if you've ever lived in Texas, particularly where it's so flat. You you hear the tornado, you can see it coming, and you kind of like to watch which way it's going. He noticed that his his dad was looking out the window as that tornado was coming, and yet his daddy didn't move. And so little Paul decided, huh, I want to be with my daddy. And so he ran over there, and while his dad was looking out the window, this little three, four-year-old just put his arms around his daddy's leg. And he said, I want to be with my daddy. You know, there's a lot of truth in that. When storms come your way, particularly tornadoes, the best place you or I could ever be, the safest place we could ever be, would be with our arms wrapped around our Heavenly Father. Or knowing that His arms are wrapped around us. You know, maybe this morning you're here and you could sure stand a dose of our Heavenly Father's arms wrapped around. You know, I guess I've told you so many times, the thing that I guess we, we miss the most as children is getting loved by a mom or a dad. You know, we really do. And it might be that this morning, it's been a long time since you've had a hug from anybody, particularly the Holy Spirit. And you know, it might be that you're here this morning, and it seems like every day, particularly the last several weeks, every day's been a bad day. Sometimes it goes like that. Sometimes we, we have weeks on end where it seems like every day is a bad day. And you keep saying, well, tomorrow's got to be better. And if not, it's worse. So what do you do? How, how, how do you handle it? You, you come to church. You, you come and, and nobody knows what you've been through this week. And you come to church and you're sitting there by yourself. You're sitting beside people and it's just, you're on a deserted island. You're all alone, you, at least you seem that way. You're sitting there because you know you did, you made some mistakes this week. You violated things you said you'd never do. You said things that you swore you would never say again. Maybe you spent a night doing something you said, I'll never do that. Have you had a bad day? You come into the house of the Lord knowing full well that the Holy Spirit lives within you. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And yet, you're trying to understand why life isn't getting any better. And so you come into the house of the Lord. And how are people going to receive you? Are they going to be criticizing you? Or are they going to be compassionate to you? Are they going to reject you because of the things you've done? Or are they going to accept you for who you are? Do they raise their eyebrows or do they extend their hands to you? Because they love you. You see, when we have bad days, Many times it's the very fact that we face some giants that week or that month and we have failed. And not only have we failed, we have failed miserably. You know the story about David and Goliath, don't you? Of course you do. Can you imagine? Here's a man nine and a half feet tall with his helmet and everything. He stood almost 12 feet tall. Do you realize that if you add his weight and because of his size, we figure that he wore a size 20 collar. He had a, a waist of about 56 inches. Now that's big. I mean, that's big. He weighed a total of 900, well, 890 pounds with his full armor on. Now I'll tell you, that's a, that's a job. The, the tallest man we ever have on record is an 8 foot 11 inch man of, of all medical records that have ever been kept. The tallest man to ever live was 8 feet 11 inches. Well, this giant of a man, 9 feet 6 inches tall, just to see him would probably scare you to death, wouldn't it? And yet he was a Philistine. Now understand, the Philistines were also called the Sea People. Many times when you read the Old Testament, you'll read about sea people, talking about the Philistines. 
But let me tell you something, or you may say Philistine. Philistine, Philistine, same thing, okay? Tomato, tomato, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing, all right? I call them the Philistines. They also were very blessed in using iron. Matter of fact, they perfected, these sea people, these Philistines perfected the use of iron in military uh, assaults. The sphere, that, and they were very particular, telling us in the scripture reading this morning, told us exactly the size of the, the, the spear head. Why? Because they made it. They, they were very good. And Israel knew, Israel knew full well that uh, these people, they, they knew how to use iron and they knew how to make their, uh, if you will, not their, their toys to hit you with or whatever, the, whatever you want to call it, their weapons. You know, this morning, seriously, let's think for just a moment, just a moment. What, uh, what Goliath are you facing? Maybe there's a bill you just can't pay. Maybe you got a pink slip this Friday afternoon. Maybe you found out that your company is going to make you get vaccinated. And you're saying, I'm not going to do that. And you're having to make a decision, a moral decision, an ethical decision. Maybe your car got repossessed this week. Maybe it was a grandchild that you heard was taking drugs. Maybe you're trying to discern should I change my career or not. Maybe you're just trying to begin your career. And whoa, everything seems so gigantic. It's like a Goliath. You see what happens when we have those bad days or those bad weeks? I'll tell you what happens. Bills come our way that we can't pay. We can't make the grade. We've taken that SAT or that ACT three times and we just can't make it. You just can't please everybody. And it seems like everybody around you is not happy with you. There's just so many things that you're addicted to. You know you should quit eating as much as you do, but you can't help it. You're addicted to it. Maybe you're addicted to video games or pornography. Maybe, maybe you're addicted to swearing so bad that you can't help it. Every other word is a curse word. What Goliaths, and there are more than one, are you facing? You know, we all face them, and we all have those bad days. Well, very quickly this morning, more time catches us. All right, I just want to tell you. David came out there, and you have to understand, here we are, here's this runt of a guy. Now remember, the Bible tells us that David was ruddy in complexion. What does that mean? Hebrew tells us that means that he was red-headed. Yeah, King David, as a little teenager, particularly was red-headed, probably bluish eyes. The Bible, the Hebrew says ruddy, all right, and that's how we know what he looked like. He was kind of small. He was very, very small. And he comes out probably five foot two, thereabout. Here's this guy, five foot two, standing here. And all he's got is a, is a slingshot and five stones. Oh, my goodness. And over here is Goliath with his helmet on and standing 12 feet tall. Now, get that picture in your mind. More than twice his height. Come on. Now, but you know something? Some of you faced Goliath this past week that were 100 feet tall. You know who I'm talking to. You know who they are. So David, you know what he did? He said, I've got five stones. And so he, he takes the first stone out. And I'm going to tell you, if you want to fight your Goliath this week, put some stones in your pocket. The first stone he got was the stone of the past. He saw that. And so what did he do? He put it in his slingshot. And you remember, David had already fought and shown. Particularly, you can go back over there, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 34, 35, 36. 
The Bible tells us that David, as small as he was, has already killed a bear, a bear and a lion. So maybe David was remembering, hey, you know, I, I killed a I killed a lion. Well, that that old man, that's nothing compared to lion. And so he got the stone of, of the past. There's some things in your past that would be good to help you overcome even the present. Because the past is not always bad, is it? But David, okay, surely he made mistakes with Bathsheba and Uriah. Okay, of course he did. But there were also some good things in his past that he could reflect on, particularly killing the bear and the lion. And so the giant was there. He wasn't afraid. Maybe when you have a bad day, you need to think about some things in the past that got you over the present. And then he took out another stone. There's another stone in there. I call it the stone of prayer. Let me tell you something. I said to you last Wednesday night, I believe it was Alfred Lord Tennyson, who said, more things are brought by prayer than this world dreams of. I asked you Wednesday night in prayer meeting, and I asked you, I printed a little uh, prayer sheet about obstacles to prayer. And I said, I challenge you to begin Thursday this past week and spend five minutes a day in prayer. Next Thursday, add five more minutes to ten minutes. The next Thursday, five more. Until you reach one hour a day of prayer. One hour a day. I'm going to tell you something. When you spend that kind of time with the Lord, you're going to find that though there may be Goliaths outside these doors, you, you, listen, there is nothing that, he, that, that you can't accomplish with the stone of prayer. You know, you have the stone of the past. You have the stone of prayer. And then I would say, we need to use the stone of priorities. What are, the, what are your life priorities? What are they? To please God? Remember this. this uh, when it comes to the end of life, only one life will soon be passed. What is done for Christ will last. So what's your priority? Maybe you pick up that stone of priority and you know in your heart, you know that this is an opportunity for you to show what God can do through you. You know, you may have cancer, but you can let God use that cancer and you can show God off of that. Did you know that? Maybe you... You have come through sin and you're, you're finally free. And, you know, God can use that. Not giving the Satan the glory, but giving God the glory. And you can use that to help point people who Jesus is. Not only are you going to use the stone of priority, but you're going to use the stone of persistence. <laughs> yeah, because being persistent, You'll be surprised what doors can open. But now let's understand for just a moment, quickly. Now let's not forget why did David, if David was such a trusting man and believed that God would, would deliver that giant into his head, why did he carry five stones? Was he afraid that he might miss with stone one or stone two? Oh no. You see, David was smart. He knew Goliath had four kinfolks. Four. And David said, well, maybe if I kill him, maybe one of them, another one will come. Matter of fact, you can read all about that in verses 16 and 17 over there in chapter uh, 21 of 2 Samuel. Yeah, Goliath had four brothers or four kinfolks. It's right there in the Word. So David was ready. If all five of the giants came at him, he was ready to kill them with the stones he had. You see, you don't know. I don't know what Goliath's going to approach me tomorrow. You know, I, I think I told you a couple of weeks ago I had to change my plan because the Goliath, of, the IRS told me I had to pay more. <laughs> yeah. It was, I mean, it's a giant. Yeah, because, but I wasn't expecting it. But hey, all right, it came my way. I didn't crumble. 
And you don't know what the life is going to come tomorrow morning. You might go to work tomorrow morning and sit down and the boss says, hey, we just don't need you. Pick up a servant. Appreciate you. But take off. <coughs> this, you and I are going to face Goliaths every day. Every single day. We're going to have to be ready and prepared. Okay? Time catches me. We might finish this at another time. But I wrap up by saying, I don't know what stones you need to put in your arsenal, okay? But the stone of prayer, and the past, persistence, priority, and passion, you can do that. And I'll promise you, you name those stones and you can defeat your child. Thank you, Jesus, as we pray. Love you, Father, as we come to this time of invitation. We want to thank you, first of all, for your goodness and kindness to us. And we also want to thank you for our salvation. Now, Jesus, Lord Jesus, I pray that if there's one in this sanctuary that does not know you, that this would be the day of salvation. Matter of fact, as our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, would you stand with me, please? Everyone stand. That can, if you're able. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you're here today and you've never said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Okay? You've never said, I want you to walk forward right now. Come on, honey. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. He loves you so much. This is your invitation. You don't know him as your Savior. Come and Lord. And then take just a moment. And as you take a moment, you just say to the Lord, whatever Goliath comes your way this week, you're going to defeat him. And your first weapon will be prayer. Starting a new job of pray. A new life of pray. He loves you so much. Oh my, he loves you. That's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Look up here for just a moment. I'm glad you're here. Look, a great day today. Looking forward. We need to be here, what? Three? I'm looking at Brooke. Go ahead. <laughs> we gotta get the bounces moved out so we can pray. So we uh we need everybody to help. Yeah. Everybody can jump on the bounce except Pat Brown. I just want you to <laughs> And uh <laughs> if you don't get that joke, we'll tell you. Anyways, won't you go out and have a great day and uh Sam and Ryan, so glad you're over here. Be very careful, okay? She's going to start PA school in North Greenville in January. So proud of you. I think that just in a few years that uh, she might be able to, uh, maybe she'll stay around in this area. Ryan is an investor from Pittsburgh, I think. Is that right? You're still up in Pittsburgh, but you're just down here seeing her. God bless you as you go back. Come back to see us. Honored that you're here. Nancy, glad you're here. Come back. And also, if y'all want to come just stuff your mouth with candy, y'all you know, just stuff it. Come on, join us today, all right? Nancy, come on too, all right? We're going to bow our heads for a benediction, and then we'll be dismissed. Loving Father, we thank you for the day, and we thank you for its beginning, because this is the day the Lord's made. We rejoice and glad in it. Now, as we're the church gathered, in a moment, we'll be the church scattered. I pray that our God walk will match our God talk. And in life's labors and in life's leisures, may we not forget right now that we're leaving for the field of mission. And there are people outside the doors of our church who are looking to see Jesus in us. May we not disappoint, is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good day.